welcome back. Jiu Jitsu 2000 here today. I have an interesting video for you today. We're going to make a survival candle. So some of the things that, that I have laid out in front of me are a tuna can and the top of the tuna can. I like to use the top of the tuna can to set inside of this sterno. Okay, now this sterno happens to be what I use for my alcohol stoves. It works really good. You can buy these sternos um, at Walmart back in the camping section. They're about five dollars and they work excellent for the alcohol stoves that I make. So that's what we're gonna do. But like I said, the top of the tuna can works really good because it fits right inside the sterno can or a sterno and it gives me a place to set my soda can stove. Now I have a soda can stove here that's already full of fuel and this fuel that I'm going to be burning today is a mixture of three different types of alcohol. It's one quart of denatured alcohol, one quart of 70 percent isopropyl alcohol, and one quart of 91 percent isopropyl alcohol. So I take those three quarts, mix them together, and that's the kind of fuel that I found burns uh, pretty good in these stoves. So first thing is first, I'm setting my stove there. Here I have a bucket of wax. I have the bottom of a soda pop can and I like to use this to extinguish my stove. It works pretty good. I have a little pair of pliers in case I need to handle anything hot. A couple little tools that I made. One's like a little poker and one's a little hook. Nothing too significant. And another little metal rod. Over here I have three strips of cardboard and the strips are approximately the same depth as the soda uh, as the tuna can okay over here I've got my safety glasses and again I want to make sure that I put them on to make sure they're free of obstructions and everything's good and we got spider-man over here hanging out too I guess he's he's kinda wanting to check it out and learn a little bit of survival stuff so basically the first thing I want to do is I want to take these little strips and I want to start to fold them into a circle so I'm here and what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the same diameter of the tuna can. So I'm using this cardboard. So I've got one of them rolled up here and I compare it to the tuna can. Not big enough. So I'm going to take a second one and just start overlapping it. I try to roll these fairly tight. So I'm here. Let's take a look. Still not quite big enough. So again, we're going to overlap again. And everything, I like to roll everything pretty tight. Now this should be a pretty good fit. I have three little things of cardboard. I'm just kind of pushing it into the can. Okay, once I get it into the can, I'm going to set this aside. Fire up my stove because I need to heat up the wax to a pretty hot temperature. Okay. 
So we'll let that stove heat up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and put the wax on top of the stove and let it heat up. Okay, here we are. This uh, wax has had about four minutes on the heat and it's starting to look like it's about ready and the reason I can tell that it's about ready is because out of the top of the pan here you can see a slight smoke coming out and that tells me that the temperature is good so from here what I want to do is I want to put out the uh, the stove so I'm just going to take this little this little bottom of a can here and I'm going to extinguish the flame. It's very simple. Just set it on there. Works very good, very quick. From here, I'm basically going to pour some hot wax onto the tuna can. This wax is very hot and you can see that I've made like a little spout on my can so it'll pour I have a rag on the bottom and I've got my little handle on the top and I'm basically just gonna fill this up with hot wax and you can see how it's kind of uh, you can see the air bubbles coming out of the cardboard that's because what's happening is the wax is soaking into the fibers of the cardboard so here's a little bit better view and I'm basically gonna fill this up you can see all the wax soaking into all the fibers and it's basically like I said it's the cardboard is consuming the wax it's taking the wax and it's it's all becoming one so I'm just gonna keep pouring hot wax until I see no more bubbles or until this can is full and I've got these little pokers and things over here that I've made Spider-Man's over there watching. And we're almost done. There's no need for a wick on these types of emergency candles. And that's it. basically I'm finished for now so I'm gonna let this sit let it dry probably give it a half an hour or so and then I'll be back okay this thing has had plenty of time to dry now I'm gonna light it and we'll take a look and see how it how it works they're a little bit difficult to get started but you can see that I have a tiny tiny flame right there just went out let me try one more match here
so I got it barely lit right there it'll take a second to heat up we'll take a look and see here in a minute so I'm just kind of tilting it a little bit to help spread the flame once these things get going they do really well though you can see the flame right here where I'm pointing Now it's starting to take off a little more. Getting a little closer. And there you have it. That's what it looks like when it's fully lit. Blow on it, you know, and it, it stays lit pretty well. It's hard to put out because it has a lot of air surface and inside that air surface there's wax. So it's like a big candle. The easiest way that I've found to put them out is a coffee can right over the top. So anyway, I wanted to mention uh, one more thing. Once you've had them fired up and they've been warmed up they ignite a lot easier so I just kinda wanted to share that and show that they ignite pretty quickly once everything's warmed up and what you can do if you're out um, out in the woods or outside or whatever and you want it to fire up fairly quickly if you have a, a heat source that's hot enough to melt the wax inside if you can set it over a flame or a heat source, the muffler of your truck, whatever, and heat this wax up to get it uh, kind of primed, if you will, you'll notice that your times for it to fire up are a lot quicker. So again, I want to say thank you. Thanks for watching my channel. Thanks for all the support, all the kind words. I hope you appreciate this video. Hope you found some useful information here. And again, I hope you guys have a good day. And we'll talk to you next time. See, like Spider-Man, he doesn't want to go too close. He's like, I don't think I want to jump into that. That looks scary. <laughs> anyway, have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.